You know what a job interview should not sound like? It shouldn't sound like your first day of work. Welcome back to Interview At, where our mission is to help 100,000 of you job seekers land their dream job. What do I mean by it shouldn't sound like the first day of work? Well, if your interview answer is completely full of jargon or lacking details, or basically you're presenting to someone that you might work with and they'll understand what you're talking about, but the interviewer is listening to you and they have no clue what you're talking about, well, that's going to be somewhat problematic. The candidate in this video was targeting a business development role somewhere in the kind of late early career or early mid career stage. Uh, and the categorization of the question that we asked was on in their ability to insist on high standards. The question specifically that we asked was, tell me about a time when you were able to achieve a great outcome, even though others were probably telling you that, you know what, this is good enough. As with all these videos, what I'll do is I'll play back a real mock interview, someone just like you who worked with us at Interview At. If you'd like to sign up for a free mock interview or use any of the tools that we make available, please visit interviewat.com. We'll play back the mock interview and I'll jump in occasionally to give you thoughts on what I as the interview was thinking, why I asked certain questions, how I interpreted things that this candidate was saying along the way. Uh, you know, you shared, frankly, a great uh, answer around kind of over delivering on results. Um, and so in, in your pursuit of great outcomes, not just good outcomes, but great outcomes, um, I would like you to walk me through a situation where you, as, as a you know, leader, whether virtually or, or specifically as a leader, um, wouldn't compromise on an outcome that others deemed was good enough, but you, you wanted to hold the line to say, I think we can do better let's continue to do better versus, you know, the team may be saying, well, you know, whew, I'm tired, you know, we've done enough, right? But just walk me through one where you wouldn't compromise. Um, okay, I did not compromise. Um, okay, um, I have a situation in which I did not compromise, but my peers did. And is it okay if I'm explaining about that? Sure. Well, um, when you say that you didn't, but they did, did you attempt to hold the line and you failed, or I don't, I don't understand. So, or are you just, uh, are you just trying to con compare and contrast your approach to their approach? Uh, compare and contrast. Okay. Um, sure. Go with it. All right. So, um, so every year the. I mean, in the when I was working as a sales and marketing manager, this uh, marketing activities are mostly outbound uh, customer campaigns. And one of the things I've noticed is I spend more time analyzing these videos as I make more and more YouTube videos, as well as chopping them up and making them available in the content library available at interviewat.com, is that uh, candidates are starting their answers without clearly stating what their role was. What did they do? What was their role, roles and responsibilities, that kind of thing. Because I, as the interviewer, or anybody sitting in my seat as an interviewer, is going to spend time and energy trying to calibrate what you're sharing with them and, and the story that you're sharing with them as to how they should interpret it, what questions, follow-up questions they should ask. How, did you do a good job or not? How should they think about it? And if you don't present that at the front end of it, they're gonna be kind of playing catch up the whole way and you're, you're just creating an unnecessary obstacle that doesn't need to exist. The outbound customer campaigns means we do this events, this conferences, this exhibitions and different billboards. And uh, um, so- uh, I'm well aware that I have typing noise going on in the background and I'm really, really sorry about that. That was before I really figured out all the software that I use here, I'm aware of it, I'm sorry. Um, These activities are usually, uh, you know, finalized by the head office. There is a team working in the head office who finalizes which region would be uh, doing or participating in which work, uh, in which activity, outbound marketing campaigning activity. And uh, for me, um, I mean, I have seen, observed that the ROI of such activities are not that good. Uh, because one my customer i mean the people sitting in the head office is not knowing who is my true customer whether the customer actually wants this uh, is actually coming to this uh, event th they do, do not know these are very general uh, events and uh, the they are very expensive to conduct at the same time um so i was not in very favor of doing this kind of activities and uh, I reached out to my manager saying that, you know, these activities are not going to get us results. And uh, 
to back my claim actually i had uh, checked like in last 3 years we had done some of the small um, activities in uh, i mean you know targeted focus segment wise activities and the roi of those uh, events were really high i want to address kind of a key element here up front which is this candidate is repeatedly referring to activities and events but hasn't really specified what they are right so it, at the front end of this video, when I said, you know, I don't want it to feel like I'm at my first day of work, right? When you walk in for your first couple of weeks and you're in a new job and you sit in a meeting and people are talking, they're using language amongst themselves. Sometimes it's acronyms, sometimes it's specific language, but they're talking in a way that you don't quite understand. I'm a smart person. I've done a ton. I know what marketing events and marketing activities are, but in this case, the candidate is thinking about something in their mind. It's very clear to them what they're talking about. I don't know what they're talking about because it's such a broad and non-specific term, they're not helping lay the groundwork to help me understand what they've done. So in the context of your storytelling, this candidate is failing on being very clear about what it was that they were doing, what obstacles they might uh, face, the actions they might take. They just keep saying events, activities, events, activities. It's not specific. You need to be more specific in your answers to help the interviewer come along and understand what it is you're trying to say. But my manager was not comfortable in, you know, challenging the head office people because it would attract a lot of explanations. And uh, similarly, he told me that my peers who were, you know, taking care of other regions in across the country, they were okay with, uh, you know, doing this kind of activity, not targeted uh, segment wise activity. So, and. Uh, but I wanted to take a risk here and I wanted to try out this uh, thing. So what I did, I said, okay, you give 50. I wanted to take a risk and I wanted to try out this thing. I, I don't, as an interviewer, I have no idea what to do with that. Percent, let's do, uh, and let's balance out. So uh, you keep 50% for this uh, activities, which the head office people have uh, uh, decided and i will take care of the another 50 percent of marketing budget which i would uh, you know allocate to small activities and i could do more activities because these were re relatively cheaper so and uh, with the 50 percent budget i did actually 2x number of activities and uh, when i i mean and when i in the end of the year when i compared the roi of the Activities. So the ROI of the big active marketing campaigns were around four is to one, and here my activities were gave a result of around nine is to one. So I say, say those numbers again. Four is to one. I mean four is to one for every uh, uh, dollar spent in the um, marketing campaign, we generated four x amount of revenue, and here. For every dollar that I have spent, I generated 9x amounts of revenue. Here's what, it, just watching this again and now listening to it, I, you know, I, I'm, if you are a marketing professional and you're talking about marketing professional things, I, part of me expects you to use marketing nomenclature that is normal. In this case, this, this candidate's talking about ROAS, but doesn't actually return on ad spend, but doesn't really reference it that way. They talk about an ROI fine, but just the way they, they shared the numbers, it felt like they didn't really understand it, or maybe it's not how it's spoken about internally. Maybe they're not highly efficient in how they run their organization. That is unclear. But throughout this answer, the, the challenge that is presented is 50% uh, marketing budget, 50% of what? We were more efficient with our dollars. Okay, what does that mean? We spent more money. How much? Like, it, There's a lot of very general statements here that if I, any interviewer who's listening to this wants to get at, did you do a good job? That, that's really what I'm trying to understand. And by being so general and non-specific in the answers, it makes it really, really hard for an interviewer to do that. And at the same time, the targeted activities have a very small sales cycle and the bigger, uh, large activities have a very, you know, uh, large sales cycle because mostly you get a hundred number of inquiries, then you have to speak to all of them to find out who exactly are they, your leads. And then the conversion to the reaching to the end customer happens very late. 
but here i had very fast like i knew this segment i knew the customers and i'm inviting the customers and the customer makes the decision on the spot so the sales cycle was very short here and uh, that was gives you instant uh, you know um, instant re uh, revenue so a question that you as a candidate should ask yourself through your story preparation as you are getting ready for your interviews if you deliver your answer could a i always like to say explain it to me like i'm a six-year-old but could somebody who has no idea what your company does what your product is what your industry is generally about could a person who listened to you walk through your answer turn around and then explain it to somebody else if the answer is no you're not being specific. If the answer is no, you're not providing enough details. If the answer is no, you have to retool what you're walking through. This is completely a function of your ability to communicate as a candidate and as someone who's gonna work in a new organization. And if you are signaling throughout your interview that you're a poor communicator, it is gonna be very hard for an interviewer to pound the table and say, this is someone we need to hire. I got nine is to one uh, ROI from the small campaigns and then Actually, um, we presented this entire thing, uh, you know, result of the activities to the head office. And from next financial year onwards, everyone got actually independence in, uh, you know, deciding on which activities they have to participate and not some head office guy would decide for us. Okay. One, time. One of the things that you have to do as a candidate is be clear. You have to bridge gaps. If I, as the interviewer, I'm doing my job, I've taken notes during the interview, hopefully, so that when we have the, the discussion amongst all the other people on the loop, I can speak intelligently about you as a candidate. If I haven't done my job and I don't do those things, will I remember you? Will I be able to speak intelligently about you to the other people in the room, right? As a candidate, if you are not bridging knowledge gaps and instead the entirety of the conversation is happening in a way that it basically feels like it's a first day of work for me, a first week of work where I'm in a room, I'm in a meeting. There's so much institutional knowledge or so many acronyms or whatever it is, but the conversation is flowing easy in the room for the people that have been a part of it. But for someone who's new and stepping into it, it's really hard to figure out what's going on. You as a candidate, you have 45 minutes, 60 minutes at best to impress upon the person on the other side of the camera or the table or whatever that you can do the job and you can do it there and you can excel. That's all they know about you. And so if you complicate things by not explaining them and bridging the knowledge gaps, it creates this situation where I, as, a, as a candidate, or sorry, as an interviewer, I can't advocate for you because I can't effectively explain what you've done because in your mind, it makes sense. But to me, someone who doesn't understand your industry, your company, your product, whatever, it's really hard for me as the interviewer to fully ingest what you've said unless I have very specific knowledge. These are the things you have to think about when you're doing your story development. I'm gonna finish my note here. And so, why do you think the organization felt differently about that? Like I get your manager not wanting to, to, to challenge up high. I understand that that's just bad leadership, but why do you think headquarters or the head office had a different view on this than you did? Because uh, I would say that the company was a traditional company. And uh, so everything was very, um, I mean, I mean, they, the leadership was very centered in the head office. So another thing about this uh, answer, the candidate as far as story selection goes, the question was, tell me a time when you, you know, over delivered or, you know, held the line on doing something great when others thought something was good enough. Here is the manager making a decision that is forcing that down, down line on, on the employees. This story really maps better to have backbone, disagree and commit. We'll, we'll just kind of put that categorization aside. But this is not necessarily a case of someone doing more because something else was good enough. It's actually a, a, the story that they're sharing is they disagreed with the decision that was made above them and they instead enacted to do something else. So just something to keep in mind in terms of how you're communicating, what you're communicating, whether that maps back to the question is asked. It's not a huge miss in this case because the, the candidate is basically sharing a story where they did more 
than what someone else, in this case, uh, their manager thought they should be doing, and they over-delivered it, and that's great, but it's just something to keep in mind as you think about your, the parsing of the questions and, and mapping them to leadership principles. So they want they, everyone, like this marketing activities, there was a team who were working, who was working. So they thought that, you know, for this area, this is good. But that decision had been taken like three years back, but in between a lot of things had been changed. So, you know, the things as, I mean, right now I feel that the customer behavior is changing very fast and uh, we have to adapt to those, you know, changing customer behavior. If we do not, then we will perish. Someone else will come and will take our place. And uh, so that was the main, you know, reason I feel that because someone decided some three years back and uh, no further discussions had happened. Uh, my manager supported me actually he how, he how did you convince how did you convince him on that topic to give you the 50 percent funds because i showed him the results uh, we did not do we had never i mean we did we had not done too many the small activities so there were only three or four activities in last four years which were done and i had the roi details of those activities and that i presented to the uh, manager and uh, I said that see this has happened it has not happened extensively because we were never doing it so let us just try if I am failing it's okay if someone asking explanation I would give but you just please back me up as part of doing your story development part of the exercise has to be to think about the questions you might get asked as follow-ups and when you are winging it or kind of ad-libbing in your interview, it shows, right? Because because the, the the story doesn't flow correctly. There's a little bit of kind of uh, non-linear logic and it kind of loops back on itself. But in this case, what happened is the candidate is, is basically saying, well, I showed my manager the results. The logical follow-ons are going to be, well, what results? Are you talking about the increased ROAS of the of the new activities that you did? Or did those happen after you did it? Like that's time timeline is a little unclear, but what results did you show? Why were they important? How did they compare to other results that they had in the past? Right? She also made a passing reference to, well, we, we had uh, not that many small events. She might have actually said four. I don't actually recall if that was the number of events she was referring to. But there's there's so much here where the answers are not specific. And when you consider how you're answering in an interview, Try to think about it as, again, you're, you're almost defending your performance review when you do those on an annual basis, right? You're talking about a thing you did. It's okay to over-explain to a point, right? You don't want to go deep in the weeds. But to be this high level and this broad, general kind of, well, I showed them the results and the results were good. It's pretty nonspecific. And it doesn't really help me build a case in my mind to support that the candidate has a repeatable framework for continued success. And he agreed. Uh because when he saw the results, then he kind of thought, let's give this idea a try. And uh, he just said, OK, fine, let's try it out. OK, so as far as a candidate who's targeting a biz dev position, it was interesting that they decided to share a conversation about where they're doing marketing activities. But that's fine. That, that can loosely map to business development activities. But as far as mapping to the question as asked, the question was about uh, where the candidate was looking to achieve something great or holding the line on achieving a great outcome where others thought, you know, something was good enough. And mostly this gets there. Now, given the level of the candidate, this is, this is someone who's kind of early, you know, late early career. This is fine. The, the challenges that arise in this interview largely stem from a lack of depth and detail and an inability to effectively communicate to me, the interviewer, uh, what you did in a way that I can comprehend and understand it. Uh, so, you know, as far as the assessment that I would have read into the room for this candidate, uh, what I wrote was, the answer presented in this block lacked sufficiency of depth and data to truly convince that there was a line held on insisting on high standards. Okay. The main issue is the lack of definition around the activities continuously referenced in the answer. Without fully understanding the base case, it became increasingly difficult to navigate the answer and determine if the candidate was performing at or above level for holding the line and delivering a great outcome. The candidate's answer was also limited to a case where they were willing to hold the line for themselves alone and not a team in general. If the candidate has a more expansive answer where they can demonstrate holding the line on a larger stakes issue with more people involved, that would have allowed the candidate to overperform for this answer. So again, not a 
red flag, not a situation where I'd say, oh, I have concerns about the candidate, but it's certainly a case where story development and preparation, there's a, a bright light shine here on lack of preparation and a lack of ability to kind of talk through the story and deliver an effective story, which had a beginning, a middle, and an end. It was kind of a rambling answer. It was overly long. The stakes were a little low. I don't really even understand how much the budget was or what the impact of the business outcomes were. So there's just details and metrics missing, which again, at the more junior levels, this is this happens, but you should clean that up. That's, that's an unforced error that this candidate absolutely could have addressed uh, with better preparation and it just didn't come through.